high level play because these, you know, these members of Good Morning, a lot of them in that top 100, a lot of them solid players. So I'm hoping for the good competitiveness of the match. It's not going to be easy for either of them. <laughs> Having these two teams kind of like butt heads throughout this entire like tournament moving their way through as we're going to be loading in here. It is going to be really interesting to see how these two teams uh, react to each other. We've uh, lost basically. the signal. We're getting a word from our HQ, so I'm, I'm, I do apologize right now. You know, we can all see it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to scramble here and, and get that figured out. So yeah, we, we are, we are, uh, we are sweating equally as much as you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it looks like we did get the feedback, which is good. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be hopping straight in. We are a minute through, but um, yeah, we can we can at least dissect the lanes and see how, what's going on here. That's right, because we did, you know, evidently it was probably the one one three that you're familiar with now in competitive play, which means usually it's a Lucario going solo, but somebody solo up top. Then you have your jungler, and now they are within that minute joined by their jungler. So the top now kind of looks like the two with three on the bottom. And so Zug, you know, we, we mentioned briefly, of course, is still going to opt for that Mr. Mime. Look at this nice KO on that Zera Aura. That's the thing about Dartrix with Toon Slim right now, able to sort of pick off somebody that is trying to escape. Maybe under other circumstances could have escaped, escaped that, but, you know, you saw Dartrix certainly pulling off that kind of last second. Nope, you're not going to get away from me, you know? Yeah, and being able to, once again, utilize the use of uh, Decidueye's passive as much as possible, it's really important. So being able to kite from a distance, being able to deal as much damage as possible just helps out Dartrix secure kills uh, when they don't even need to be close in the fight. So uh, good luck on them. Meanwhile, good morning. Still applying a lot of pressure here at bottom. Now uh, we saw them almost catch Zogrog and Big Uzi yeah. dropping really low. Going to be able to save up a little bit. Dropping down, though, they are going to get popped. Bulby's coming down here, has that mid lane experience and just looking to chase whoever they can. Gonna be able to grab Goof to start, looking at Toon Slim as well. Just gonna be able to kite off a little bit as we're about to approach the second beat. We could actually see what Indie Bear did there. This is sort of akin to what the Animal Kingdom does, if anybody's a biology or science buff here with me, is the, uh, it's the decision whether you need to group up and then there's more targets to hit or to spread out. And then, you know, you as an individual are less likely to well, in this case, be KO'd. <laughs> We're talking different. We talk about wild animals here, but Indie Bear almost showing us that principle here in Pokemon Unite because Indy did pull off that Leaf Tornado to obviously increase his move speed, but really did sort of pull away from the rest of the group. And so it was like they knew. Again, they are like psychics sometimes when they're with each other. Certainly they're communicating, obviously, on a Discord call or whatever. But, you know, the idea was that Indy did pull off that and, and escaped while, you know, everybody on Orange didn't really know who to chase at that moment. Yeah, it, it forces them to be able to leave here, and Good Morning is going to be able to secure the Dreadnought and continue the fight, so Zogrog trying to get out of there. Goof is going to probably drop, and he does, as he's going to get collapsed on by four. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the team just trying to create a little bit of space. Zogrog puts up a little bit of a barrier, maybe to threaten a stun, but Toon Slim kind of wants to trade this out. He wants that top. He wants the Rotom in, tr in return for missing out on the first one, but Lutano... Slowly bringing Bulby in as well, but they are going to be able to secure down the Rotom and start applying pressure to top. Notice how Toon with the Spirit Shackle was looking to maybe get, you know, that KO off on the uh, Zera Aura if it was applicable. Zera Aura, obviously, a speedster, right? It's, it's speedy on its own. You know, it's going to be able to get out of there pretty quickly. And so, obviously, diverted that Spirit Shackle to get the wild uh, core fish down there. Lutano is going to deploy that Unite move. Very nice because not only gives, giving you that speed edge, but was like, hey, I can secure this uh, KO right now because that Lucario is in our territory right now from Good Morning. Uh, so it is, you know, no dramatic, no significant point differential right now, and we are in that mid-game, so this is kind of what you want to see for evenly matched teams, am I right? Yeah, you, you want to just see these two teams duke it out, and with that score, it's going to bring TTV up by 9 at the moment, but still really early game, lots of objectives still need to be caught up here. Um, but yeah, there's just a, looks like there's a skirmish also in mid right now. We see how Good Morning is slowly rotating a couple people out there, trying to protect their Mr. Mime. Um, but we'll see how that goes as... Uh, oh, they are going to secure the kill on Goof to start. Um, and the rest of the team is slowly collapsing in mid. And earlier for that Rotom objective, we should mention, you know, that was a little bit down to the wire. Obviously, yeah, Lutano had to do what he had to do. He had to survive, you know, but bringing 
Uh, I believe that's Bulby, isn't it, for the Zara Aura? But basically, bringing Zara Aura in closer in range, I would say, of that Rotom objective, it was just sort of, uh, it, it kind of had you maybe shaking in your boots a little bit if you're a TTV, just like, you know, we want to make sure we get this objective, right? But all in all, it ended up being okay. It was just uh, one of those high stakes moments, I guess. And so we are seeing now both teams really represented here in that squad fight. The Unite moves are going to be popping off because uh, we're looking for that second dread, right? And there it goes. So that's the first KO and the second against Team TTV. Yeah, Goof is trying to survive here. Has even popped the Unite move to try to get the Buddy Barrier off, but there's just so much pressure coming out from Good Morning. Um, they, they have a pretty solid level lead. Um, just trying to utilize what they can, what they have in order to not give TTV any space to work with. So uh, it's more map control and understanding what you can and cannot take here. So that was actually very interesting to see, and it was unfortunate for Lutano, who was really putting in work right there, just about to get the KO, and then, you know, there was a bit of time, I guess, where everyone was kind of in the tall grass, we were having the chase, and then luckily Good Morning, to their credit, was able to pick him off by supporting each other at the exact right time. So, again, that was very unfortunate if you are Lutano, because he was really putting in that work that was needed for it, and, uh, you know, they getting outplayed, so... TTV, you know, we're just looking at a differential of five points right now and uh, entering into that final stretch somewhat soon as we battle it out for Rotom here. You know, Rotom is going to go in the way of TTV. Um, the arrows threw me off for a sec, but they did get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a really good heads up play by Slashcan. We saw it earlier where they were um, trying to escape from Lutano, just being able to have the eject button ready um, will work out more in their favor, but um, good morning. Just taking care of the Rotom real quick. They're just saying, okay, if no one's going to protect it, we're going to take whatever we can. Um, and yeah, we're, we're slowly approaching that Zapdos timing, the double scoring and everything. So a uh, lot of high point values moving forward, but we'll see how uh, PTV or Good Morning is going to be able to close out this game. We'll call on another player who really has, I think, exemplified just some some great pivotal moments, some good gameplay here, which was, we're looking at him, Big Uzi right here. So Big Uzi really has been that Venusaur that can hang into the fight, you know, and, and oftentimes that's wonderful because when you're running that pedal dance and you're using that Giga Drain, it will keep you in that fight longer and longer and longer. And it's just like, I'm sure if you're on the other side of that, you know, if you're on TTV side, let's say, trying to take it down, you're just sitting here like praying and hoping like, please go down, you know, and it just keeps on staying in that fight. And you notice there was another uh, KO against their Venusaur. So TTV, hopefully not sweating it too much, but they are getting pushed all around here. 50s on both squads, though. So here in the final stretch, ladies and gentlemen, those point values are doubled, as we all know. Look at this now, a little skirmish. And right side oh, team. Boy. So good morning. You're right. That was very quick to get that Zapdos. Yeah, they decided that they needed to secure this. They had two pickoffs already. So good morning understood, hey, we have the man advantage. We have the, we have the player advantage right now. So we might as well take this objective. And that's exactly what's working out for them right now. So good morning. Going to be able to push forward and score whatever they can um make it really tough for uh, ttv to even defend against this so uh honestly just good awareness by good morning they understood like hey we the the second that they had the numbers advantage moving into dreadnought um they said we'll take the objective it's not only a deny to ttv but it's also you know a, a match extender for us just being able to secure the rest of the game um, and yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, TTV has something up their sleeve to maybe try to counteract some of the points or if it's more of a we're going to use this time to now brain like think about brainstorm, figure out what we want to do with uh, with our next game. They often have pretty cool heads, you know, level headed team team TTV is and <laughs> This is not good, though. I mean, look at this. And, and I've mentioned they are the team to pull out those victories out of nowhere. But we're starting to see, you know, last 30 seconds, sub 30 seconds. And that's a pretty big score difference now. So they really do have that uphill fight. And we're noticing Mr. Mimes even trying to drop in here. Slash can for good morning. They're getting those KOs where they need to. You know, Lutano couldn't break through. Just saw him get KO'd right here. Slash can will fall, but not without, you know, putting in real work right there. So... You can see it just in the macro game, too, as we're counting down these last 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. They still had those two goals there on bottom. So 
Really good job from Good Morning. That you know you don't see that every day where you can take down TTV like this. Yeah, they had really good map control for majority of the match. So Good Morning, not only being able to say like, okay, we take Rotom, or if you take Rotom, we're gonna cancel it out. Um, they just understood like we have advantage, and I would say once again like. The last two minutes really played in their favor. The second that they understood, hey, we have Goof out of position here. We can take Goof, just KO them. And they saw they saw Toon as well, like kind of hanging around. They're like, that's their two main damage dealers gone. Um, taking advantage of that, Good Morning did a really good job. Uh, had map control. So now it's just up to TTV, maybe to make an adjustment. Um, I don't know what exactly that, that adjustment is. Yeah. Um, if if it is, you know, bring Zug back onto something that's more comfortable. Um, I know it's really tough to play into a Mr. Mime, especially moving forward in this tournament. So we'll see if they, they have something planned for that. So obviously we can see that the uh, match is in the loading right here. And uh, I don't believe we're looking at significant changes. You know, Zug is kind of the main one that we've had our observations on. Although we do see Toon. That's sort of the key here. We were just talking about Decidueye is going to drop the, uh, over to Greninja instead. Yeah, I, I don't want to say I called it, but uh, I, yeah. I kind of did. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it, it worked out. It worked out quite well for, for them. And I think that this is the right adjustment that they needed to do. Um, they needed an answer to Zero Aura. Um, and when you don't have that output damage that you normally do, um, especially as like Decidueye, you need your range. And with with Zero Aura being able to close the gap so quickly, um, it's really difficult for Decidueye to get the damage that they want. So um, picking something like Greninja gives you that ability to escape in the middle of the fight, deal consistent damage, which is really important here, and also just kind of apply pressure where, where necessary. So I feel like this is the correct answer for, for TTV. Good, good use of uh, leveling and trying to figure out how to get... Um, how to, how to get Toon kind of rolling there. Um, and that should really help him out in the long run. And Nash, it's okay to say I don't know, but I'm almost certain that you do know. So what we observed was actually the Zera Aura, this was Bulby, I believe, on Good Morning, did sort of go top lane with Luton, I mean, uh, with the Lucario. But what we noticed was that the Zera Aura actually kind of took that back farm that's on the top lane, you know, kind of close to the goal. That would be the A-Palms and stuff and then actually TP'd back to base and then took the jungle. So I I myself will admit, I, I do not know the strategy here, but I guess it's just to get the farm that Lucario maybe doesn't need. And then they went for the jungle farm, of course, and that you don't want to deny that, obviously, or have it stolen from you even. Because uh, Aura now is back up to level five and everything, but I just have to wonder, you know, do you have any comments on this? And again, it's okay if we don't know, that's just something surprising. I think that's something that their team knows. You see, look at how aggressive Bulby yeah. is right now. <laughs> he's, 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 he's eating the other side. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do here. Because like Bulby is now eating the farm that belongs to the tune here. And he is going to be able to get that, but he might get punished for it, actually. Uh, trying to get chased down. He has the level of escape, but also they're going to be chased down again. He does yeah. Volt Switch back. And he's now targeting Indie Bear. Indie Bear going to be able to save himself a little bit. But Bulby trying to TP out, but it's going to get interrupted and brought down. Yeah. So, you know, Greedy, yes, yeah. got, got what they needed, disrupted some farm. It's it's really helpful for them. So good morning, just trying to eat up more map space than possible. Um, yeah. But TTV hopefully wants to, wants to push off of this, try to get a little bit more aggressive. Um, eat up whatever farm that they can secure safely um, and then move on forward. Notice Sanji right there for beginning game, we'll say. We won't call it, you know, if this was the late game or something, but for beginning game, dropping in pretty high point values here. Sanji going to bring the score difference uh, a little bit closer together. That's good, of course, but we're still in that early game. And now we have Dreadnought, we have Rotom here on the map. It's going to be a fight for Dreadnought mostly. It does seem, though, Lutano as uh, TTV's Lucario up there on the top lane, though so far has not gone for the Rotom, of course, solo. But you can see Dread already at half, so it's the battle for the Dreadnought. Look what's going to happen. We have both teams competing for it, and it does seem that Good Morning is going to secure that. Yeah, they are going to be able to grab it but at what cost they are going to lose a couple people here 
but it is a lot of pressure coming out from bottom lane. That you saw once again e eating up whatever they can in lane, eating up uh, anything else that they can get, and once again TTV has to play for for other objectives or. Potentially just trying to grab whoever they can. Sanji escaping with literally a sliver of their HP. Might be able to TP out too. And they do. They get away. But yeah. meanwhile, the rest of, there's one more member of Good Morning, the Eldegoss. Still trying to fight this out. Uh, but meanwhile, at top, you know, Bulby, Big Uzi already taking that out. And uh, letting the Rotom slowly move forward. Yeah, that Rotom will touch down. And that's going to result in the goal break there on the top. So Good Morning, once again, looking pretty good here for the mid game. But look at that. Just as we're saying it, Lutano going to come through in a pinch and uh, get some pretty high points here for TTV as Bulby does pull off that Unite to take out Greninja there. That was Toon. And so now just uh, another series of skirmishes as we kind of observe what's going to happen. Lutano will TP back out. Looks like TTV kind of ready to accumulate those points and see like, hey, can we make another push? Just let's bring this score back up. They obviously don't know what the score is, but I'm just saying, you know, you can see, obviously observe things when you're playing these tourney matches and just notice that Orange so far does have actually all of their goals still standing. Yeah, they have a lot of map control. They're taking away a lot of the farm that TTV usually gets for free. So um, it's really good that Good Morning is starting to disrupt this pattern for them making it that much harder for them to really push on forward and try to get what they can. So um, TTV just needs to find some more uh, farm wherever they can, uh, whether it's uh, trying to find a pickoff in this bottom part, they are going to skirmish, or if it's going to be through their farm. Yeah, so this is, once again, a testament to Venusaur right there. It is eventually going to go down, but Big Uzi for Good Morning was able to really withstand a lot of that punishment. Now we see a Showtime Unite move go down from Slash Can. Everybody is. This is pretty typical when you got that uh, next Dreadnought, and you really want to fight for that. You know, it's, it is going down about halfway now at this moment, but you're going to see those Unite moves just fly off everywhere. Right side team, so Good Morning once again going uh, to secure that Dreadnought. And so looking a little bit dicey if you're TTV right now. Yeah, and you desperately need to secure down one of these goals if you can. Um, they did grab the... They got the Dreadnought, they had the shields, but uh, with without that first goal, TTV actually has to back up and try to figure out a way how to heal themselves up. Um, but Eyes now are on Dread... Or not on Dreadnought, on uh, Rotom. They need to try to take more space, maybe return the favor that Good Morning did to them in Game 1. Um, and if they happen to get that kill, you know... It, can work out really well in their favor. We saw high at DZ right here. That's the supporting the Eldegoss. Uh, was really in danger because Lucario kind of loves to pick off an Eldegoss if it can. Anybody with fragile defenses, you know, low mobility, it's typically looking for. But what we saw actually was Slash Can just coming through so. It was brilliant, really, to throw down the barrier at the exact moment. And, you know, high at DZ really didn't have a lot of time left before it was going to get KO'd. And so we did see, of course, uh, Good Morning securing that Rotom. So. Uh, once again, you know, we're not looking at huge dramatic point values, but just how everything is transpiring. You see now TTV going to lose some of their players, and it's just really not looking good now for Toon here at the bottom. So definitely, uh, maybe shaking in their boots a little bit. Yeah, it it's the farm that's coming out from not only Big Uzi, but also Bulby. Like, just, they have these level advantages, and it's from securing the Dreadnoughts multiple times, but... TTV is just having a really difficult time of securing farm and getting levels. And when you have somebody like Bulby who has the like who has potential to just pick off whoever they want um, in a fight, it's just really difficult to get points and also experience. Sometimes we should comment, you know, occasionally I'll point this out, but a lot of people are aware and it you know, it's it's a little bit uh, trivial of a thing, but you'll see like uh, Zagrug just earlier was dancing around. You know, you'll see them often just circle. Uh, usually that's, you know, brief, of course, but they're waiting for either a cooldown. They're waiting for some kind of strategy. You know, they are obviously all on comms together. They're calling each other. Here we are in the final stretch, by the way, but, you know, that's the reason for that. If you're ever like, wait, why are they just like circling around on the goal? It's just to prepare for something ready to happen. And again, it's usually brief. You don't want it to be too long. Look at, you know, Big Uzi coming out here with those pivotal KOs as Lutano being very slippery and sneaky, going to score uh, in there at the top lane and back door. Yeah, this is going to get really spicy uh, yeah. pretty soon. So Lutano being the only one in there, but he's going to burst it down quick. And it looks like Good Morning is going to secure down that Dreadnought. 
But Zapdos, yeah. because of the or Zapdos, because they're yeah. pushing forward, um, we we had the early score. We Good Morning is gonna try to is gonna dunk as much of this as they can, but uh, we gotta see if TTV can actually answer back. We see the reason why they're prioritizing getting those um getting getting the goals up top first is because the ones that are on bottom don't have jump pad so if for example if goof or or tune is able to get to that spot win a fight uh they might be able to score a little bit but the the zapdos going in the way of good morning is just really really huge for them and like just sucking away a lot of the potential that ttv can score and it's lucky that Goof was able to resurrect at the time that he did because, you know, that would have been devastating to have Slash can just add insult to injury right there. Although, may not need it. I mean, we're looking at it all trans transpire, uh, I guess, you know, unfold, I guess is the word I was thinking of. But, you know, there are some 50s here. You see Toon, obviously, and they want to drop that in. So, Mr. Mime, that's Zugrug, is going to showtime it up right there. And Toon, obviously, opting for a different path because whatever path you need to victory, you're going to take it. But... You're right, that Zapdos really was the, the catalyst to seeing this, you know, be a very uphill battle for, you know, to get Team TV to win. But obviously, Good Morning just knew, let's assault that quickly and very strongly, right? <laughs> they all had some 50s and 40s. So when you have those higher point values, it really is a steep hill to climb. So TTV, unfortunate, right? They are now down two victories right there because that's good morning. Really showing that they came to play. Am I right? <laughs> the match should be coming up here, I see. And uh, just as we say that, wonderful timing. So let's look. What we've got here now is Toon. Once again, kind of being our wild card, but going to switch it up now to Talonflame. We have seen Toon play Talonflame in the past and be pretty comfortable with that. But Zug is going to opt still for Mr. Mime. You know, you can debate that all day. And uh, Kanashi and I certainly did. You know, maybe not debate, but we discussed it. And uh, Toon with Talonflame, I think, kind of goes the oddball move set as well. So not even just the Decidueye here, but oftentimes I have seen him maybe running that, uh, I think it's a Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, right? Is kind of the maybe less popular pick sometimes, mm -hmm. but Kanashi can maybe talk to that too. But we'll see. We'll see what happens, of course. I'm just kind of giving some speculative commentary. Yeah, if it is Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, it's more... Uh dps driven it's more damage driven um because uh i believe uh brave bird is it brave bird or uh yeah brave bird is supposed like, to yeah. give like another a boost to your uh regular your your special attack or your your regular uh what is a boosted attack it gives you a boosted attack uh when okay. you land it yeah. so um just having that extra layer of damage will help them out um, but yeah, we already see Good Morning, you know, applying even more damage. They have that experience share going out for them, for Big Uzi. And that that is another thing that we, we've been keeping tabs on. It's just like, with experience share going for a, uh, for a Bulbasaur like this, just having those levels early is really important for securing down the rest of the, securing the rest of the game. Right. I've somehow I've sometimes heard a team say, you know, like I want that Bulbasaur to be useless, you know, <laughs> like you want to take it down yeah. early because then if they're if they really are taken down that early game, you know, we've already talked about the monster that Venusaur is, so I don't think we need to, you know, specifically point that out. But that's the obvious, right? Let's get rid of that early. But we're noticing, of course, TTV gonna pull this up to 46 points just as I'm talking about it. Was gonna say 36, but see that they are trying to make that kind of aggressive top push bottom lane has been struggling though a little bit you know we saw some early ko's against both indie bear i believe and zug uh, might have been all three of them but yeah so definitely you know good morning gonna be able to put the pressure on right there you see the ko right now against zug rug is that mr mime and now some of that pressure in the jungle happening uh, to try to you know stop good morning from stealing that once again as they now edge the points in their favor yeah, and it's really important because, like, Fletch Tinder needs to become a Talonflame as quickly as possible. And if without a couple of these little pieces uh, that Good Morning is constantly taking advantage of, it it's going to be really tough to get to those levels quick. And it right now it's pretty even just because uh, Lutano is scoring up at top as much as possible. Oh, it looks like they are going to try to turn on to Sanji here. Uh, yeah. the fl it does opt in for fly. That's another thing to look out for. Um, so giving them a little bit more of sure damage, but also um, making sure that they have a, a form of escape that doesn't take too long as well. 
escape, and we obviously can't uh, deny as Lutano gets KO'd, but we can't deny the objective stealing powers of Fly. You have noticed, obviously, losing Zapdos, you know, I think both games, right? Uh, well, actually, nobody got Zapdos in that first game, I believe, but it certainly could have helped anybody, but... You know, you think about objective stealing powers too. So anyway, we are going to see a KO streak of two right now from uh, Goof for TTV. As the Dreadnought is on the map along with Rotom here being the first. And they are going to whittle that down to about half HP as we're talking. Yeah, they definitely need to lock this down. Yeah. They saw how it went last game. They do secure it this time. Um, and yeah, they're they're getting that level. So they, they could die here, which is okay. Um, but just being able to secure it on the levels they is, is really important for them. You're definitely right that it's okay. I do want to add to that, you know, we obviously, we don't want to see KOs anytime, you know, no team wants that, obviously, but notice what happened is we brought Talonflame now down to the bottom, and so very nice from Toon, bringing in that Flame Sweep. You know, Mr. Mime's going to try to throw some walls here, but this was pretty devastating. I mean, it was a KO streak for Venusaur. <laughs> Getting picked off, though, you know, it's a good on Sanji to find that opportunity, but Toon just kind of came in like a monster, you know. It really did make those KOs, and that's what Talonflame is for. Let's get in, let's get out. We avoid terrain, you know, when we're Talonflame. We can fly up there, whatever your moves may be, so... Very good on Toon to play Talonflame how it was meant to be played, but also to do what TTV needs to do to win, right? And so they are looking for this Rotom maybe to steal and oh. so to do it. So that was very nice and pivotal. Yeah, that was that was sneaky from yeah. Zugrug. Uh, almost, almost cost them their life too, but they put up the wall. Uh, being able to push and get the last hit on the Rotom in order to push it forward. But with... Yeah. Good yeah. morning being there, they were able to burst it down, but it is something that otherwise, like, this is the adjustment that TTV is making. It's, we could secure down our objectives and what we need to secure. Um, the, the sooner we get that done, the, the better for our team. So they may be behind right now, uh, but that's not going to be the case as we see Zogrog just free dunking on top. Um, but yeah, it, they have made the adjustment and this is looking really good for TTV. Right, Good Morning is going to get dunked on right there with those points, and so that was uh, definitely helpful. But TTV knows, you know, we're going to get those objectives, but also when that Rotom, even though Good Morning did burst that out pretty early, and, and, and to their credit pretty quickly, you know, it, it was sort of inconsequential there, but it does just still provide you as the winning team of that Rotom that opportunity. Maybe you want to then push bottom. If you're not going to push the top with that Rotom, you have that opportunity because you have an opening at bottom. It took, what, four of Good Morning, I think, was up there to, to burst that Rotom. And obviously now we already have that uh, next Dreadnought on the map here as we're in the mid game, but transitioning somewhat soon to late game. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting. Uh, oh, and the steel coming out from the Talonflame. Good job by Toon to be able to secure that down. So, uh, yeah, now they're applying more pressure to that front goal. And I don't know if they break this or if they... Uh, if they want to, I feel like if they get a couple kills, which they are doing right now, Lutano getting a triple kill, just saying, you know what? You, you did this to us first game. We're going to take our goal. We're going to take up the map control that we missed so much. And yeah, they're going to continue to apply the pressure as they start looking towards Rotom. And you bring up a good point about the goal. They did opt to break that, but there is even a strategy to be considered if you want to leave it. Um, sometimes you can think about it with terms of in terms of Zapdos. Indy Bear is feeling some pain right now, but backed up, luckily, by Zug. They are often going hand-in-hand. Hand. Usually you see it as a Snorlax, of course, because we talked about Zug already, you know, in his pick with that. Uh, Bulby running into the barrier right there, maybe thinking it was going to be down at that moment. So that was just sort of a little bit of uh, mistaken timing, maybe, or just uh, being unaware right there. But Slash Can now going to be the victim, too. This combo, very nice. Zug and Goof making what needs to happen, happen. But I was just going to finish that thought of just, you know, if you do get that Zapdos, maybe you have that goal right away. It's it's right there, you know, if you did happen to leave that bottom goal up. But it's okay. They opted to take it, like we said. So the KOs are happening, man. It's everywhere that you need it to be. But Bulby obviously going to change things with that Unite move. It's just this was a pretty dangerous territory, right? As they get the Rotom. Yeah, and this is a very interesting timing for Rotom. Um, they understood that they, they wanted to apply the pressure. They wanted to grab what they can and... Toon is going to be able to get that kill as well, but if Good Morning does not deal with this Rotom, um, it is going to give TTV the option to just double uh, double the scores when they do get down to this point. So uh, Rotom is applying pressure. They, they have to deal with that. So it looks like the rest of TTV is potentially looking to help out here. Sanji dropping really low, going to get brought down by Lutano. Um, 
but yeah it looks i don't think that they need the dreadnought they aren't in position to take it so right, right now just by looking at the goal situation you you see how ttv is starting to play a little bit of defense trying to figure out like where is the best place that we can be in order to prevent them from winning the zap there you go man there's the ko right before you know zapdos comes on screen we are in the final stretch it's this was the change that we needed and i think we all can agree we like this change and tune really was a big part of that and the match is not over so let's not you know call anything yet it's just tune very very nice you know that was all about stealing those objectives which they did and so uh, we i feel like we're doing great kanashi right just to toot our own horns here as you called the uh, you called the change that was necessary and i was saying if there is a team to do it it was ttv so there goes the verdant anger there goes the showtime cut and cloud crash look at unite after unite just going down in the squad fight of the century right here because this is going to determine do we get the zap do we maybe just score without it? You know, but you got to see who's going to get KO'd. Unfortunately, the only KO right now is going to be on Team TTV, but now it's going to be two. And Toon Slim going to throw down that flame sweep and just match that two for two right here. Yeah, and they're just trying to find whoever they can at the moment. Both people, both teams are just looking at, at kills and trying to secure, okay, who's going to who's gonna be respawning right here? They, who? What do we need? And we see Good Morning actually coming out on top, but they are very low on HP. And the team TTV is slowly starting to rotate back in, starting to have a little bit more, but Slash can trying to keep them off down to a quarter. The slap comes down and it's not going to be enough. The Town Flame is going to be brought down. And it's, meanwhile, Good Morning now is going to start applying that pressure that they had earlier. They had the goals going in their favor, and this could be the nail in the coffin so that uh, Good Morning can can secure first place here at the Victory Road Unite Clash number four. That is absolutely right. So that has to be so devastating. I would be pretty tilted if I was TTV right here because they had this and it was in their hands and you saw Toon coming up from the bottom lane ready to steal that objective and it's just a matter of timing everything considered then being ko'd after that so that is absolutely devastating feels bad man is right i saw that in the chat you guys very devastating for that 611 point values for good morning so congratulations to them that is going to secure the full victory three to zero to shut out ttv is no easy feat and they've done it so ladies and gentlemen you have your new champions Victory Road, Unite Clash number four is going to go to Good Morning.